This is KGW News at Sunrise. Oregon's gubernatorial candidates are spending the final days leading up to the election vying for votes. We talked with all three who have a message for people who may still be undecided. Plus, the winter blues is, you know, maybe a nuisance, uh, a hindrance for people. I'm sure a lot of our viewers would say they suffer from the winter blues, but this morning we're talking about something more serious, seasonal affective disorder. So we have some tips for you on how you can fight it. That's coming up. Also, it's being called skimpflation. So basically, that's companies finding ways to cut costs by cutting back on ingredients in the products we buy. What to watch out for on your next shopping trip. Good grief. Yeah, I know. <laughs> First, they took the size that used to be this size, and then they shrunk it to that size and still charge you the same. Now we're missing ingredients. <laughs> right. Or putting in cheaper ones. <laughs> yeah, it's none of it's good. Yeah, you know, we're not Rod, excited about that. We used to have fall. Now we don't have fall anymore either. Well, we I go know, right from summer to winter. Boom. Cut that out. Yeah, uh, Drew and I talked earlier this morning. Basically, what we're having right now is more like mid-December weather, not early November weather. Radar is showing you quickly find at least snow in the air on Highway 26 once you start getting out of uh, Hillsboro and start climbing elevation up toward banks and timber. This is showing up in the West Hills, at least in the air. There is snow falling. Uh, we think in terms of sticking snow, that snow level stays around 1,500 to 2,000 feet today. It is chilly outside. 35 out in Forest Grove. Gresham is the same. 40 in downtown Portland. The same up in Vancouver and the same temperature in Salem. So our weather today uh, will stay in the mid 40s. Heavy showers. It could produce some rumbles of thunder or some hail. Also, the air is cold enough that if you get a downpour, that thing could pull down enough cold weather. All of a sudden you would get a snowburst. You'd go, what the heck? But generally, it's going to be rain. Back to you. OK, thanks, Rod. So it was a pretty busy weekend for candidates running for Oregon governor. Tina Kotek, Christine Drazen and Betsy Johnson are all making their final push for votes ahead of Election Day tomorrow. The latest polls show Kotek and Drazen basically neck and neck here during the final couple of days. Johnson continues to lag behind in third place. KGW's Blair Best caught it with all three candidates to hear what they hope to get across to voters in these final days. This race for governor has been the most competitive Oregon has seen in recent history. All three candidates now taking these final days before the election to travel the state and meet with voters. From Salem to Portland, all three gubernatorial candidates give it their all in a final fight for votes just days before the election. We need change. We have got to fix what's going on in this state. This is democracy. This is how we win. And you are beautiful. Thank you. Democratic candidate Tina Kotek met with Planned Parenthood leaders and other supporters on the campaign trail Sunday in Northeast Portland to kick off a canvassing event. We got a couple more days, folks. Thank you for being here. She talked of reproductive freedom, protecting the environment, public education, and standing up for the working class. But I have been a change agent in the legislature making sure we can help working families move forward here in our state. As governor, I'm going to work hard with everybody around the state to make sure people can be successful, stand up for working families, and make sure we have the state we all want to have. Meanwhile, Republican candidate Christine Drazen was in the state capitol, starting her tour of six stops, ending in Clackamas County on Monday. This election is our opportunity to turn our state around. She talked of this supporting police, safer communities, and fighting police. to repeal ballot measure 110. If elected, she would be we Oregon's first Republican governor the since the 80s. We have come up short far too many times. Right. Not this time. If we're going to have better for the future of our state, if we are going to address the homeless crisis in our streets, have a more affordable community, and in fact have better, stronger schools, we can't choose more of the same. We have got to vote for change. Not holding an event today was unaffiliated candidate Betsy Johnson. Instead, she made the rounds at small businesses in the Portland metro. This after her tour of rural Oregon last week. We are caring way too much right now about who wins the horse race. Does the Democrat win? Does the Republican win? We ought to be focused on how are we going to govern. Over the past few weeks, support for Democratic candidate Tina Kotek has grown. That's according to an Emerson College poll 
poll released Friday. 44% of voters support Kotek and 40% back Drazen. Johnson lags behind with just 8% support. And I hope my candidacy and my presence in this election will at least change the dialogue to the point that we all recognize we got a problem and we got to deal with it. And we've got to deal with it in an Oregon way, not in a Republican or a Democrat way. All have one final message for voters. Get out the vote. Vote, vote. Vote. Get those ballots in. All three candidates say it's up to voters at this point, and they're urging Oregonians to get out and vote. Ballots must be mailed or returned to an official drop box on or before 8 p.m. on Election Day. Election Day is Tuesday, November 8th. Blair Best, KGW News. Well, if you still have some questions about this election cycle, we have answers. You'll find them in our KGW election guide. If you text the word election to 503-226-5088, we will text you back with a link to find that guide on our website. Well, there's a lot on the line for both parties in this election. Congressional Republicans need five seats to take a majority in the House and just one to control the Senate. If Democrats lose control, it'll impact what President Joe Biden can get done during the last two years in office. Now, one of the Senate seats in question is in Pennsylvania. Both President Biden and former President Trump were there campaigning over the weekend. This election isn't a referendum, it's a choice. It's a choice between two fundamentally different visions of America. If you want to stop the destruction of our country and save the American dream, then this Tuesday you must vote Republican in a giant red wave. Right now, the deciding vote in the Senate is Vice President Kamala Harris giving Democrats a very narrow majority. To change that, Republicans would need to win in battleground Pennsylvania, Georgia, Nevada, Wisconsin, or Arizona. More than 8 million young people became eligible to vote in 2022. We're talking about Gen Z, and data show they're already turning out at nearly double of that previous, or the rate of that previous generations of the same age. Listen, in the final days of this election, I'm looking at all the polling. I'm not sure there's a red wave. I'm not sure there's a blue wave. But what I do know I know there's going to be a Gen Z wave on November 8th. We're seeing it already. The Today Show is sitting down with the two youngest candidates from different sides of the political spectrum to get a better sense of the impact that Gen Z votes are expected to have this year. That's coming up after sunrise at 7 o'clock. Here's a look at a few more local headlines that we're following this morning, starting with Fred Meyer. Fred Meyer says a technical error is preventing some of its employees from getting paid. The glitch, they say, happened during paycheck distribution after the company launched a brand new human resources platform. A spokesperson for Fred Meyer says it's only affecting a small percentage of employees and the grocery retailer is working to fix this issue as quickly as possible. About half a dozen businesses in Southeast Portland were damaged early Saturday morning and some were also burglarized. This happened near the intersection of 55th and Burnside. Authorities say the break-ins likely happened between 5.30 and 7.30 in the morning. Portland police say they're still looking at the damage and trying to figure out what exactly was taken from those businesses. Final headline here, less than two months after launching in Portland, TriMet has taken their new FX2 buses off the road. Those are the buses we're looking at right here on the screen. There are these 60 foot long green buses that travel from downtown Portland out to Gresham. TriMet says fasteners that keep bolts in place are loose. Those bolts connect mounting plates to the frame of the bus. Sound serious, Rod? Yes. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> TriMet is now working with the manufacturer to fix this problem. <laughs> and that is a final look at your morning headlines. Okay, before we get to Rod's forecast, we want to look at our wintry weather over the weekend. People sharing photos of snow. Yeah, the top of that car, pretty fancy little car there, yeah, um, covered that. in snow. <laughs> this is from viewer Mark in Staten. My daughter down in Corvallis, she's at OSU, sent me a video of some snow falling there. And I was like, wow, already? Is this one and done, my friend? <laughs> well, I mean, this is 
I wouldn't even say it's one. It's like point <laughs> zero zero <laughs> one. two. Oh, so no credit so given by the weather man. <laughs> um, yeah, but it is evidence of how cold the supper level low is up top. And I said earlier in the show, if you get a heavy downpour today, I mean, raindrops pull down cold air with them, right? Because that's where they come from. You could get a snowburst almost anywhere today. That's how chilly uh, this overall air mass is. And there's that cold upper level low. And again, all of this is this pool of cold weather. Daytime temps the next several days, a good 10 degrees below normal for this time of the year. Really, we've gone about as far below normal as October was above normal, <laughs> just like that. I know you, you don't need me to tell you that. It's very obvious. All right, I just checked uh, at least uh, the, the cameras I could see out along I-84 and the blues look okay. There is snow out there, but the, the highway looks okay. We have uh, heavy rain showers up around the uh, Long Beach Peninsula right now. And then we have radar uh, in northern Clark County and then also up in the Columbia County and up uh, Highway 26 into the Coast Range showing snow. Now for sticking snow, meaning the ground temps 32 degrees, you've got to get up to about 1,500 feet or even a little bit higher than that uh, in terms of all the reporting sites that I've looked at this morning. Snow level is going to be between that 1,500 and 2,000 foot mark for sticking snow again today. Here's 830 this morning on Futurecast. Just notice uh, this is mostly rain showers. Notice the yellows though. Those are some heavier downpours, maybe some hail. Maybe a little snow or a grapple burst. Grapple is kind of a mix of snow uh, and where the raindrop freezes into ice. So you get these little pellets coming down. Here we are at 6 o'clock tonight. Overnight tonight, the showers pretty much wind down. I think there's at least a shower chance that lingers tomorrow. But basically, in terms of most of us seeing anything, it ends overnight tonight. And then we're going to be dry for a handful of days. And east winds are going to start to blow. Now, that will set up some freezing nights ahead if you don't get the east wind, meaning you have calm wind conditions. Here we are. Right now, it's uh, 40 in Salem and Portland, but 37 in Newport and 38 up in Astoria and Kelso. Our forecast highs, again, about 10 degrees below normal. This shows 45 in McMinnville, 47 in Salem. Southeast winds today, 5 to 15 miles per hour. Similar numbers up into southwest Washington. And notice we are starting to include some freezing spots even overnight tonight into tomorrow morning on the forecast. Out in the gorge, uh, certainly the chance of some showery snow mixes this morning with temps in the 30s to start, but it will be all rain showers with highs in the 40s later today. 46 the next several days uh, and look at Portland's forecast 30 Wednesday morning 30 Thursday morning. If you don't have any east wind on Wednesday and Thursday at your house, you could be down to more like 26. That would be the first hard freeze of the season. The weekend could be dry too, but right now we're looking at least a shower chance back to you. Rod, did you enjoy that extra hour of sleep over the weekend? I found it not restful because I was like ready to get up, but it wasn't time to get up. <laughs> I enjoyed the extra hour of sleep, quite did simply. You sleep? I, I did a little bit. Yes, I did, Brenda. We're talking about setting the clocks back. There's actually a downside to the darker and drearier winter months ahead. We're talking about seasonal affective disorder because for some people, winter can take a toll on things like their sleep, their digestion, and their mood. So after the break, we'll get advice from a local doctor on how to deal with seasonal affective disorder. And really quickly, we want to remind you the KGW Great Toy Drive. It's coming soon. Now is the time to sign up to become a Toy Drive collection site. A huge thank you to Rada Paint for already signing up to help out. You can get on board too if you'd like. Just go to kgw.com slash toy. And then you can sign up your business or organization. We'll send you an official Toy Drive collection kit once you do it. We'll be right back.